What's that yellow stuff that squirts out of an insect when you step on it? Do insects feel pain? Can an insect hold its breath underwater? These are all common questions when it comes to the internal workings of an insect, and you'll find out the answers to these before the end. By the way, I'm more of a catch in a cup and a release type of girl than a step and squish person. Just saying. I'm Dr. DeBusk, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the internal morphology of insects. The digestive system, sometimes referred to as the alimentary canal, is a long tube-like structure that runs from the mouth to the anus and is centrally located within the body cavity or hemocele. The interior most region is called the foregut or stomatium, which includes the buccal cavity, the esophagus, and the crop, which stores food. The primary function of the foregut is to begin the breakdown of food particles and transport them to the next region, or midgut, or mesenteron. In some insects, the crop opens into a muscular proventriculus. This organ contains tooth-like denticles that grind and pulverize food particles. The proventriculus serves much the same function as a gizzard in birds. The midgut is the major area of digestion and absorption. Undigested food particles then pass into the third region, the hindgut or proctodium, which consists of the ileum, colon, rectum, and often rectal pads. The hindgut functions in water and solute reabsorption and waste excretion. The three sections of the digestive tract can be easily identified by structures found at the junction of each region. Gastric cecae, for example, mark the end of the foregut and beginning of the midgut. It is believed that the purpose of these structures is to increase surface area for greater nutrient absorption. The constriction of the gastric CK also marks the spot of the cardiac valve, or sphincter. Near the junction of the midgut and hindgut are long, thin structures called malpighian tubules. These range in number from a few to hundreds, but only aphids, order hemiptera, are currently known to have none. Malpighian tubules are creamy to yellow in color and work in conjunction with the ileum to provide the site for osmoregulation and excretion. Unlike the closed circulatory system of humans, insect circulatory systems are said to be open, meaning that they lack a complex network of veins and arteries to help transport blood throughout the body. Instead, insect blood, called hemolymph, flows relatively freely throughout the hemocele. Only one vessel is present in the insect circulatory system, the dorsal vessel. Posteriorly, in the abdominal region, the dorsal vessel acts as the heart, pumping hemolymph forward into the anterior region in the head and thorax, where it acts as the aorta and dumps the hemolymph into the head. It flows posteriorly and is returned to the heart via ostia which are small slits in the heart region of the dorsal vessel designed for hemolymph uptake. The hemolymph is approximately 90% water, straw-colored, yellow or green, without any hemoglobin since it's not involved in respiration. It transports nutrients and waste to and from the organs and tissues. It will temporarily store and convert trehalose, a type of sugar broken down for energy. It also creates hydraulic pressure needed in molting and hatching. The ventral nerve cord resembles a railroad track running from the head posteriorly to the abdominal region. The railroad track is made up of two nerve cords, connectives, that run longitudinally with a series of node-like ganglia. The anterior most region of the ventral nerve cord is called the subesophageal ganglion. Just dorsal to that structure is the insect brain. So do insects feel pain? Insects have a nervous system that resembles ours in many ways. That is, they see, hear, smell, taste, and feel. Many of our pains arise from pressure, shock, heat, and other stimuli administered at high levels. And insects most assuredly respond to these bodily sensations. So, yeah, probably. The insect respiratory system is made up of a series of tubes that originate from spiracles, openings of the exoskeleton that allow for gas exchange and extend throughout the body. Internally, the tubes, or trachea, appear as thin white lines throughout the hemocele and are particularly noticeable surrounding internal organs. Trachea deliver oxygen to internal organs and tissues through the tracheals. So can insects hold their breath? Even though insects breathe through spiracles, not their mouth, scientists have known that some insects can hold their breath for hours or even days. 
Studies suggest that while oxygen is vital to an insect, too much can damage tissue. The opening and closing of spiracles is controlled in a way that exhales carbon dioxide as needed without inhaling too much oxygen. So if you're trying to drown a roach, you may be waiting a while. Variation among insect reproductive systems is great. Closely related species are often isolated from one another via small variations in the morphology of reproductive organs that prohibit interspecies mating. However, a generalized system can be constructed that closely represents all sexually reproducing insects. Female insects are able to make eggs, receive and store sperm, manipulate sperm from different males, and lay eggs. The reproductive systems are made up of a pair of ovaries, accessory glands, one or more spermatheca, and ducts connecting these parts. The ovaries make eggs and accessory glands produce the substances to help package and lay the eggs. Spermatheca store sperm for varying periods of time and along with portions of the oviducts can control sperm use. The main component of the male reproductive system is the testes, suspended in the body cavity by trachea and the fat body. Most male insects have a pair of testes inside of which are sperm tubes or follicles that are enclosed within a membranous sac. The terminal portion of the jacillary duct may be sclerotized to form the adiagus. So there you have it. The internal systems of an insect in many ways is different than a human and you can see that they are not particularly complex. I hope you learned something about the internal systems of insects.